Hi, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. Um, this is a quick, I'm, I've been out sick, so I'm hopefully going to create, finish this meeting in 30 minutes. Um, but all the content is there. Our agenda is to set a timetable for work to be completed. Evaluate the current content. Um, TSJC sent us information from um, their technical math 108 that was contextualized, um, contextualized for their line program. And then um, we need to have a discussion if we want to attach badges to skill attainment um, and what that would look like in this course. Um, it looks like I have Bruce, Carol, Didi, and uh, Mingli on the line, and I have two call-in users. Um, if I didn't name you, can you please go ahead and give me your name? Hi, Mingley. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, I awesome. Can. Hi. Awesome. How are you doing, Brenda? Quite well. How about yourself? Good. Good, good. I missed you seeing you at the um, advisory meeting on January. We'll have to schedule another time uh, oh. to go for material. Yeah, you were missed. Oh, yeah, thank you. But you were, well, you were well represented. Good. Say, so I did a good job on hiring people, right? Yes, 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 you did. Yes, you did. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. The first part of the meeting is actually just going through the mechanics of what, what the grant requires of our MOOC and kind of like the timetable we're on because we have to um, give this MOOC. CCCS does not own a MOOC platform, so that either meant we had to go present this to D2L or Canvas, and D2L wanted us to pre present all the material to them to an interior CC online committee first, and then if that committee approved of the material, then send it up to D2L to approve, and then at that point in time, D2L could have refused to host the MOOC or went ahead and hosted the MOOC. Canvas was a little bit more uh, amenable. They, they just want the content and um, They've been working at me to actually work out some of the details, <clears throat> and they're willing to host it without having to go through two subcommittees. So I thought that was that was easier on me because I don't know about you, but I have too many meetings to go to. Um, so here's our agenda. Um, our timetable for the MOOC beta launch is June. Um, you know, I had that in my head. June 23rd. So the the actual course starts June 23rd on Canvas. The listing goes live April 21st. However, the um, the woman I've been working with with Canvas has already pre-enrolled 500 students. Um, I guess because they've had a wait list of students wanting basic math courses. Um, so she's already got 500 students enrolled in the course, even though it starts in June. Mm -hmm. So, Brenda, can I ask you, then these students would get credit through CCCS? No. Um, this oh, okay. is a MOOC. Yeah, no. Um, that was one of the decisions um, that was made early on, is that students who actually go through this MOOC will receive a certificate of completion and maybe badges, but they will have to actually test at individual colleges to be able to get the credit. I see. Okay. They'll have to test out, um, and that was because there was no. Um, I have a really hard problem with um, student authentication, and Canvas does not have biometric identification in their MOOCs. And so, my experience with online courses is that there are certain entities out there that will take your course for you for a specific dollar amount to get you a specific grade. And we had an incident at CCCC Online where one IP address was actually taking six students' courses in the same in the same class, as well as that same IP address, which was in um, Nashville. Um, and they were also taking 15 additional courses throughout the CCC online system. Um, so I'm really wary 
unless we actually have biometric authentication for students to actually give them credit for them. So I just didn't go there. Um, yeah, and I think that's much better from the perspective of each other colleges. They'll be much more comfortable then. Right, right. And I mean, mm -hmm. um, uh, Metro and um, our colleges are also going to be working on articulating that three-hour course on up to Metro. Okay. But that's one of those, it's still in the works kind of thing. Um, the timetable for the basic employability is the listing goes live August 21st. Um, and the beta test must be completed by the end of November. Canvas does not run any courses in November and December. That's kind of like the reset period. Um, so we have to have the course completed, the actual running of the course completed by the end of November. And the credit for prior learning, the listing goes live um, 2014 for an actual beta launch of February 15. And um, to tell you the truth, that's one of the back burner items for me. And I'll explain that why in a couple of more slides. Um, what we need to know about a typical MOOC um, student is the average student works in a MOOC the very first time they register. They rarely ever actually uh, do anything in the, they'll register and do nothing. Um, a typical MOOC student has a two year or four year degree. Um, they only put in two to three hours per week in 15 to 20 minute increments. And they typically only complete one MOOC out of the four that they register for. Um, the design, um, MOOCs run between four and seven weeks, and if you multiply that out by how much time the student actually spends in the MOOC, so if it's a four-week course times um, three hours a week, that's a 12-hour, about 12 hours of material. Seven weeks, it's 21 hours of material. Um, you cannot build a MOOC like a regular online course. It must be designed for mobile devices. Oops, that's spelled wrong. Um, compact content with video links of less than three minutes. Um, total time on task is 30 minutes, including practice drills. And these are all done through analytics, both D2L, um, Canvas, MIT, Stanford have all done, run analytics on MOOCs, and this is what the analytics, analytics has told them. So this is all pretty much not Brenda saying, this is what's coming out of the actual MOOC research. Um, each learning chunk contains context, challenge, and activity, and then a feedback loop. Um, because we, as a co uh, coalition, um, consortium, do not have money to hire an instructor to moderate the MOOC, this is going to be a self-paced MOOC, at least with the math MOOC. Um, and so we need to actually build in that feedback loop. Um, and it's probably going to be automatic. Congratulations, you got 70% on this test, or it looks like you might want to retry these concepts in the course, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, just a minute, now, Brenda. Now, would you sure. Post, uh, um, the, um, the design for the course that uh, runs uh, four and six to six weeks, uh, to seven weeks, uh, what's that uh, uh, credit equivalency? How well, many... and that's the thing. Be mm -hmm. Because we are not doing a four credit for this course, mm -hmm. what this is going to be is a refresher of content. So we are going to refresh all 17 um, competencies in the Math 108, mm -hmm. but it's not going to actually relate our seat time, student seat time, to credit hours. Credit hours. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Because the students are going to actually have to go physically go to a testing center either at our, coll our colleges mm -hmm. or your college or AIM and actually test out of the class to get credit. Yes, uh, so that has to do some, uh, that has to have something with uh, with your uh, MOOCs because you, you if you uh, what I'm trying to say here is uh, you know if you're building uh, the shorter actually shorter than the three credit hour requirement. Is that right? Shorter than right, because time. right, because MOOCs are not equivalent, at least the MOOCs we're building for the, the thing are not equivalent to credit for credit. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Just like with MIT, even though they build a 15 hour 
quote unquote 15 hour, uh, a three hour, 15 hour course, 15 mm -hmm. week course, they yeah. don't translate into credits. That's right. It's not going to translate to credit, but uh, I, I think what I'm trying to say is the student now uh, should know, okay, well, now we will have uh, a couple of uh, modules, uh, modules on the book, and they should know, okay, after I take the one, two, three, then I can go ahead and uh, test out some, uh, you know, the math. Uh, they uh, might, you know, a, correct, okay. correct. You are correct. They might only need a refresher on, um, and I can show you what the MOOC design actually looks like. Um, Good, yeah, thanks. Let me see. Sure. Sorry for the delay. Um, all right, so, oops. Yeah. This is all the material, which is a 16-week course that we got from TSJC and CCC online. And it goes over um, numbers, conversions, measurements, and then the next grouping is algebra essentials, geometry, finance, trig, vectors, logs, statistics. Um, and so when we translated that into the Canvas, so you're actually looking at the Canvas course right now. We have the numbers, conversions, and measurements, algebraic essentials, geometry, finance, basic trig properties and vectors, and statistics. So theoretically, if we actually had an engaged student, not like the typical first MOOC student, they could actually jump in, take numbers, conversions, and measurements, basic trig properties, and statistics, and then actually show up at a um, testing center at one of the CCS colleges and say, I want to try to test out of Math 108. And they might do it or they might not. Um, so it could be that they, that you know what, they, they pay their money and they don't make a passing score on the test out. So they actually have to read, they have to take the technical math anyway. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? You sound a little concerned. Me? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, it is no, exactly what I was uh, thinking. Uh, so I was asking. So I think that's right. It, uh, um, but uh, okay. Yeah. Does anybody does anybody ever else have a question as to uh, the way we're building it and how students could actually? And also, we have to think about this. Our target audience for the advanced manufacturing is a person who's already employed in the industry and they might need a refresher course on algebraic expression, uh, equations or something in geometry and their employee will say, okay, here's a MOOC. I need you to take these two modules so that you're up to speed on, excuse me, up to speed on what I need, need you to do for your course, for your uh, work. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're building it actually for two populations. One is a student who's wanting to test out of Math 108, and one from the industry perspective. <coughs> Excuse me. That right. is um, actually saying, okay, I see that you're weak in this point and it's hurting our production line, so I need you to take these three modules in this MOOC to get up to speed to be able to do your job, whether it's ratios or percentages or converting metric you know, inches to metric, that kind of stuff. So those are the two populations that we're actually dealing with. Um, Do you think, Brenda, that um, it can also be used as a study aid for the actual students in Math 108? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, we'll, so once the actual course goes public, um, mm -hmm. everybody can have that URL. And with Canvas's MOOCs, the way we're designing it, it will run for five weeks. Um, and that was one of the um, directives that Canvas gave us. That was about the only structure they said. It, that it, they're, they're doing five weeks equals like a 15-week course. Um, so once we actually have the link active, all the schools can actually keep that link online and have their students register because we will not cut off registration except for the very last, um, I think it's the last two weeks of the course. So our beta test runs in June, and then we'll do another. Uh, we'll do an actual start date of 
probably the end of September. And at that point in time, that end of September, we'll send out the uh, MOOC link again. So if you have students who are struggling in 108, they can, they can dual enroll in uh, the MOOC as well as the actual course itself. Does that make sense? That was Cheryl, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Brent, it's Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Okay, now, is there a cost for MOOCs? How does that work? No, MOOCs are free. Okay, so so it isn't an open-ended, you're, you're talking about a five-week course here. We are uh, talking about a five-week course, and it is open-ended. So if, if you... Start any time and end any time? Well, no, because we actually have sessions. This one um, starts... Oh, okay. All right. It's no, that's, June, I didn't understand June, that. Yeah, it starts June 23rd, and it will run for five weeks, which is July 27th. And we have to remember that MOOCs do not run on semesters. Um, they run continuously. So if we actually um, – I could actually schedule another MOOC to start July 28th, and they would run this MOOC again. So it just depends on how often I want to actually run the MOOC. And I'm looking at it like I'm trying to run the MOOC at least four times a year. And that way we'll, we'll pick up everybody in a actual semester course as well as those students who want to test out before they have to register for the next semester. Okay. Does that make, does that make sense, Bruce? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So this is not a self-paced online course. This is actual sessions. Can you restate that again? This is not a self-paced course. Th these are actual sessions with an instructor. No, it is a self-paced course because we don't have money to hire an um, uh, instructor to moderate the course. Everything in this course is actual, in this MOOC is actually self-paced. But you have to finish it within the time frame, the Correct. five to seven weeks. Correct. So you can pace yourself to do it all in three days. Absolutely. Okay. And remember, the very first MOOC, uh, uh, initial uh, student who takes the first MOOC rarely ever completes it. So they could sign up for the MOOC and actually look at the very first start here um, module. They could actually start here <clears throat> and actually go through just the intro, the front page, the orientation, mm -hmm. getting started in the course, all that stuff, and then not touch the course again for the next five weeks, and they would be a non-completer. And that is very typical of your very first student who enrolls in a MOOC. But there's no consequence to them. They can then enroll to the next time it opens Oh, up. absolutely. And to tell you the truth, I am a typical um, MOOC person. Um, Okay, I, I I also am one. <laughs> right. So I signed up for some right. at MIT. Right. right. Yeah. So I signed up for Society Science Survival Lessons from the AMC Walking Dead. I completed three of the five actual MOOCs, and I never actually completed it because I got busy. I also have Badge <laughs> 101. <laughs> I got Badge 101. I've taken this course twice, and I've gotten the very first time I got, I was a lurker. I lurked in the very first module, I lurked in the second, third, and fourth module, but I never actually did any of the work. Um, this time around, interestingly enough, I didn't do the intro and I didn't do module one, but I started working in module two and I'm now in module three. And the course ends uh, in three weeks. So I'm just like a typical MOOC student. So I take yeah, what I, I need out of it. Yeah. yeah, I take what I need out of it. And then it, it really doesn't bother me if I don't complete it. I don't take it, I don't personalize it and internalize it that I'm a failure. And that's, I think, what's really powerful about a MOOC is that you right. can go in and out of it and not be considered a failure if you don't complete it, as evidenced by the two times I've taken the badges. Um, I'll just keep signing up for it. Um, so to repeat what we've actually talked about is the fact that the math MOOC is going to run for five weeks. Average student time doing all the course content is probably going to be three hours a week, chunked into um, 20 to 30 minute segments, depending on the content. Um, they can drop in or drop out whenever they want. The MOOC will be public 
uh, as of April 21st. So you can go to canvas.net and actually sign up for the MOOC. Um, and just because they get a completion certificate for the MOOC does not mean that they will get college credit for that MOOC just because they have a piece of paper or a batch. They, they have to actually test out at the schools and get a passing grade on the test out to be able to get college credit. Okay. Uh, uh, the test out, is that by, uh, carried by, um, by you or by CCCIS? Uh, each, in, and Carol, you're probably more familiar, each individual college has a testing center. Okay. And at that testing center, they have protocols to follow if somebody wants to test out a course. Is okay. that correct, Carol? Okay. I believe we, so, we, yeah. We have those too, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. that's what would happen. They would they would actually present themselves. They'd have to pay a fee, and then they yeah. would be assigned yeah. a testing time and date to take yeah. that, and then they would have to pass at a certain percentage to be able to get college credit. Um, all right. <clears throat> so what we have now is I have a lot of material that we need to actually evaluate the current content. Um, my first, my first actual module, the numbers, conversions, and measurements, there's almost, I would say, four weeks of material in that. Everything ranging from actual um, MP4s where um, David King, I think from uh, TSJC, actually explained um, a concept and how they would actually apply it in the Lyman program to um, audio portions of explaining something about proportions or ratios or exponents, that kind of stuff. Um, one of the things, um, Canvas has requested us to change the title and refine the course description to appeal to a broader audience. Because remember, what they're selling is, yes, a MOOC, but they want to pull more people in and they actually make money by the number of students that are in that course. Not that the students are actually paying a fee, a registration fee, but they're able to actually lobby that audience base into other things that are marketable. Um, so they suggested a new name as Career Math. My concern was, would this name be confused with Math 107 for our students? Because remember, whatever we term it, it's going to apply, it's going to actually print out on the certificate. How about Technical Math? Well, I did submit technical math, and they, they think it needs to be refined. And I don't know, I'm not a subject matter expert, so I can't change, like, I don't know how to change technical math. Is it um, math concepts used in advanced manufacturing, or is it um, technical math used in your career? Like, you don't have to decide on this now, just think about how it. How about contextualized math? That would work. Contextualized technical math or something like that. Maybe that would be more attractive. Okay. So I'll write that down. And then uh, the description, I took it right off of the CCNS, but they said that that doesn't tell us what the, the actual <laughs> content is going to be about. And I thought it was pretty good because it was measurements, algebra, geometry, trade, graphs, and finance. Um, but they want it to be a little bit more snazzy. And I'm, I've just mm -hmm. put it off because it's just like, if you guys have any ideas on what this course should be called, or if MSU has a better description for a course like this, please send it to me. And I'll just try to submit that to see if they'll accept that. They say it's okay, but it's not going to actually receive it's not going to create the broadest audience. Their target for this course is 1,000 to 1,500 students. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're looking at. And they're saying, well, this kind of doesn't have enough pizzazz to what the course is. And I just was not Maybe, really yeah, putting their, like, practical concepts uh, that apply to your job. You know, okay, cool. 
something. I understand what they're wanting to do to make it sexier, you know, for to attract right. students. That's exactly what it is. Okay, I wrote that yeah. down. Awesome. Um, and then we need like a team, and I don't care how many people are on it. I know um, Divi is going to be one of our chief um, evaluators and builders of this math MOOC, but he also needs help. He can't do it all on his own. Um, so the focus is not teaching math 108 competencies, but it's to be used as a tool to enable students to refresh their knowledge. It can be used as a supplemental resource. What? Um, and then if we want to think of this, this MOOC is a just-in-time training kind of thing. What are the essential skills and knowledge does the advanced manufacturing machining student need? in regards to the 17 competencies. Um, my question is, after I brought the course in, and remember, it's nothing against TSJC or CCC online. It's just, you just cannot take an online course and squish it all down and put it out as a MOOC. It just doesn't work that way. Um, let me see. If you look in um, that very, very first m module of the MOOC, there's everything from whole numbers, fractions, decimals, integers, rational numbers, binary, octal, hexagon numbers, um, metric systems. And I need somebody from your department, the advanced manufacturing department, to tell me whether, yes, we actually need our students or our incoming or workers to tell us what the, that they don't know what a fraction is. And if they already know what a fraction is, then we should just, um, <clears throat> we should just eliminate those those concepts that you think they should already know before they enter into this course. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, if their 108 has requirements, the requirements. competencies, the, fir the first seven competencies are demonstrate a knowledge of ratios, proportions, and percents, units of measure, Signed numbers, powers of 10 in scientific notation, algebraic operations, algebraic equations and formulas, and the use of, of systems of equations. And I, I am not a subject matter expert in that, so I don't know if learning those seven competencies is dependent on the fact that somebody knows what a whole number is mm -hmm. or knows what a fraction is. Do you see what I'm saying? And that will be, I guess, um, helpful for your faculty to be able to share with you. Well, you know, we expect them to already know what a whole number is, and we move on from there. Um, Brenda, I'm going to have to leave the call because I have, I had to call someone else. Well, you share very... the PowerPoint. Yes, and this time I'm actually recording the webinar, so the recording of the webinar will go up next Monday. Oh, that'd be great. Okay, All right, thanks. Cool. Sure, bye. bye. So did we have any other questions about what I actually um, need bodies for is the actual evaluation of the content that's already up there? And it can be anybody. It doesn't have to be a math person. Um, and then if we go on, Contextualized content should be represented for the machining, welding, uh, engineering, graphics, and electromechanical. And there are the leads. However, does the concept of proportion mean different things to machining, welding, engineering, graphics, and electromechanical? And that is another subject matter expert opinion I need. It's just like if it's not that much different, can we just go with a basic, this is what a proportion is, instead of contextualizing it? What do you think, Bruce? Well, I'm not a subject matter expert on that, but uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. But I'm guessing that most of the concepts of, you know, are somewhat equal across the, the whole board there on any of the concepts or competencies. Okay. 
Um, so then we have, um, after that, if you have ideas that you actually want in this course, but don't have, you have too much on your plate and you don't have the time to actually be on the nuts and bolts of actually creating this move, just send me the material or ideas and we'll work at integrating them in the MOOC. And I can, and if everybody who wants to actually, um, um, look at the MOOC, lurk in the MOOC as we build it in um, D2L, I can actually give you a student login so you can actually look at it. So in the chat box, if you'll just type in your name, your email address, I'll make sure that um, I need your email address and your S number if you're a CCCS um, group employee um, and I'll uh, enroll you or I'll give you the student login and so you can actually look at the material as we build it. Um, and if you want to be on the building team, also put your name in the chat box and give me your um, email address. Um, badges, um, we are going to have a cer completion certificate. Um, badges are very big in the industry and this, is, this focus on badges for the course is not necessarily for our college students, but it's for those employees who are sent to the MOOC to be able to earn a level of competency. And so the question I put out there is do we want badges for all modules or are we or do we need to identify the math skills that are a high priority in advanced manufacturing and backward design those skills to a competency and award a badge for a competency? Meaning that if I only work on the geometry module and I pass um, what is it? Angles, triangles. I'm able to actually carry around in my virtual briefcase an actual badge that says I am proficient in angles and triangles. Um, because that is the way the industry is going. Is they're not necessarily um, wanting more advanced degrees, but if they actually have an employee who can show that they badged out on a specific competency-based skill, they will take that into consideration. Um, so that's one of the things that we're going to need from your industry partners if you ever just strike up a conversation on badging, like what is your important um, golden nugget in math skills that you want your students to actually, your employees to have. And we can backward design that skill into a competency and award it. <clears throat> Does that make sense? I don't hear anything, so I assume it's going okay. Um, of course, it's, it's required to be open, so that means that nothing has, um, it's all CCBY. There's no, we're going to, if you create something or you give me something for the math MOOC, keep it on your intellectual property list, either as a URL or an actual citing it so that you actually have evidence that you produced or gave material to the math loop for your DOL requirement. Um, there's open resources. And then all I'm left with the, is the MOOC discussion. Do we have any other, um, I know I covered a whole lot of material. Um, is there anything else that we needed to talk about regarding the timeline of the MOOC or anything like that? Brenda, this is Amy Rye at PCC. Uh huh. And I wouldn't mind helping work on the MOOC, but only from a I am completely unaware of MOOCs, and it would be more from a does it make sense as a user or does it not make sense as a user? Because I am in no way a subject matter expert. Okay, awesome. That's ex that's the exact type of roles we need. We need somebody who will actually go in and actually work through the MOOC in D2L and say, well, this makes sense. I completed this. This is a broken link. I don't understand what you wanted me to do this. 
this video was unclear. I never learned anything out of it. That kind of stuff. Okay, um, that, I can do that. But please don't post my grades. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yes, outside my little cubicle, I have all the new people <laughs> on the list. <laughs> please make good copies for. <laughs> Did we have any other questions or concerns about the MOOC? Anybody else volunteering to actually look over the material we have? Remember, we have material. I just need somebody who is working in those advanced uh, manufacturing um, pathways to tell me, you know, this is way too. This, and if you and one of the things is finance. I'm not exactly sure if finance is actually. It has 43 elements in this module. Everything from calculating dates. Like if you have February 21st and you need something due on July 31st, how many days is in between those dates? How many days? So there's things like calculating days, calculating interest, cash discounts, percentages, commissions. I'm, you know, all that was actually in the course and all the competency says is demonstrate knowledge and use of finance, which means that um, calculate the cost and analyze data, solve simple and compound interest problems. So those are the only two actual topical outline things you need to do. So I need somebody to say, you know, take out the discounts. We don't need anything on discounts. Take out, you know, EEP. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> Do I have anybody else who wants to think about this? I guess not. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and um, end the meeting. It'll be the record. The recording will be up um, on the website on Monday, and I'll send out the PowerPoint. Um, so that's all I have. All right, so we'll see you. Um, in a month then. Thanks. Uh -huh. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs>